Nay, it will be this hour ere I have done weeping. All the kind of the launces have this very fault. I have received my proportion, like the prodigious sun, and am going with Soproteus to the Imperial's court. I think Crab, my dog, be the sourest natured dog that lives. My mother weeping, my father wailing, my sister crying, the maid howling, the cat wringing her hands, and all our house in a great perplexity. Yet did not this cruel heart of Kerr shed one tear. He is a stone, a very pebble stone, and has no more pity in him than a dog. A Jew would have wept to have seen our parting. Why, my grandam, having no eyes look, you wept herself blind at my parting. Nay, I'll show you the manner of it. This shoe is my father. No, this left shoe is my father. No, no, this left shoe is my mother. Nay, that cannot be so neither. Yes, it is so, it is so. It hath the worser soul. This shoe, with the hole in it, is my mother. And this, my father, a vengeance on. There it is, now, sit. This staff is my sister. For look you, she's as white as a lily and as small as a wand. This hat is Nan, our maid, I am the dog. No, the dog is himself, and I am the dog. Oh, the dog is me, and I am myself. Aye, so, so. Now come I to my father. Father, your blessing. Now should not the shoe speak a word for weeping. Now should I kiss my father. Well, he weeps on. Now come I to my mother. Oh, that she should speak now like a wood woman. Well, I kiss her. Why, there it is. Here's my mother's breath up and down. Now come I to my sister. Mark the moan she makes. Now the dog, all this while, Sheds not a tear, nor speaks a word. But see how I lay the dust with my tears. When a man's servant shall play the cur with him, look you, it goes hard. One that I brought up of a puppy. One that I saved from drowning when three or four of his blind brothers and sisters went to it. I have taught him, even as one should say precisely, thus I would teach a dog. I was sent to deliver him as a present to Mr Sylvia for my master. And I came no sooner into the dining chamber, but he steps me up to her trencher and steals her cape one's leg. Ah, tis a foul thing when a cur cannot keep himself in all companies. I would have, as one should say, one that takes upon him to be a dog indeed, to be, as to her, a dog at all things. If I had not had more wit than he, to take a fault upon me that he did, verily I think he'd been hanged for it. Sure as I live, he'd suffer for it. You shall judge. He thrust me himself into the company of three or four gentlemen-like dogs under the Duke's table. He'd not been there, bless the mark, a pissing while, but all the chambers smelt him. Out with the dog, says one. What cur is that, says another. Whip him out, says a third. Hang him up, says the Duke. I, having been acquainted with the smell before, knew it was crab, and goes me to the fellow that whips the dogs. Friend, quoth I, you mean to whip the dog? I marry, do I, quoth he. You do him the more wrong, quoth I. Twas I did the thing you were of. He makes me no more ado, but whips me out of the chamber. How many masters would do this for his servant? Nay, I'll be sworn. I have sat in the stocks for puddings he hath stolen, otherwise he'd been executed. I have stood on the pillory for geese he hath killed, otherwise he'd suffer for it. Thou thinkest not of this now. Nay, I remember the trick you served me when I took my leave of Madam Sylvia. Did not I bid thee still mark me and do as I do? When didst thou see me eave up my leg and make water against a gentlewoman's farthingale? Didst thou ever see me do such a trick? <laughs>